In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at a handful of cool features that are within the console that not many people know about, particularly if you are just getting started with Studio One Seven, switching from another DAW, or you're just beginning working with a DAW in the first place. Now, some if you've been using Studio One for a couple of years, some of these you're probably already going to know. There may be a couple that you are not aware of, so if you're a seasoned user of Studio One, feel free to stick around. But just know this is going to be a bit more geared toward people who are switching over and just getting started with Studio One Seven. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get our console open. So I'm going to come to the bottom right corner and I'm going to click on the mix. And the first thing, it's not really so much of a hidden feature, but since we're going to be focusing on the console, we can make this large, a larger view, full screen. So if we come over to the top left corner, we can click on this upward facing arrow and then this is going to enter into a full screen mode. Now, if we click on this center button here, this is probably going to be more along the lines, maybe a smaller panel when you initially click on the upward facing arrow. If we want to reattach, we can click on the downward facing arrow. But we'll go ahead and click again. Let's click on this center to make that full screen. Now, the very first thing we'll take a look at is starting up in the top left corner here, we have this little I.O. button. And when we click on this, we can actually access the input output routing for our audio interface and Studio One. So if you happen to be working with the console in this full screen mode, then you can go ahead and make some adjustments if you need to here for whatever reason. Just know that you can access it there also by right clicking we can access the audio aisle set up there. Now below that button, we have a little wrench icon and there's a ton of cool things that we can do here. And you can also just take your time on your own and these are pretty self descriptive and you can go through. So if there's some sort of functionality that you're not finding with the console, it could be hidden in this menu. So for instance, if we would like to colorize our channel strips, then we can see, we can just make that selection there. If we'd like to view input controls, so we can do some gain staging. For our mix, we can do that there, and there's also polarity controls. We'll go ahead and toggle that back off. So definitely take a look through this menu to see if you can find some functionality that you may be looking for or missing. Now I'm going to come to the bottom here and just hover on this border for our sends and click, hold and drag to pull this up so, so that we can get a better view of it. And then also we can come here to the border of our faders and pull this up for a larger view of our faders. And we'll just go ahead and do that for the rest of our tutorial. But coming back up to the top left, we have this button here and this is for the fader flip feature. So we can see I have this Vox sample one, a flute one and flute two. These are being routed to this effects channel, which has a room reverb on it. Now, normally we can hover and click, hold and drag up or down to adjust the sin level for these, or we can use our mouse wheel to make fine adjustments. But if we have a song that we're working on that has a ton of tracks and we've got a ton of different channels that are being sent to effects channels and we want to spend some time focusing on those levels, we can make use of this fader flip button here. So once I click this, take note of our faders here. These are then going to change to a green color here. Now any channel that is making use of an effect send is going to be highlighted with this green box. We have the faders that are green. And now we can make use of these faders to adjust the send levels. So this is just going to give you a larger view a bit more manageable when you have a large track count and a lot of your tracks are being sent to effects channels. We can switch back to the normal view just by clicking again on the fader flip button there. Now, if you have virtual instruments that are capable of multiple channels or multi outs, then we have a feature where we can view those directly within the console, those multiple outputs. So here, for instance, if I click on this icon here, I can view our impact and impact. We can see this is going out on channel four. This is going out on channel two, three, one, and so on. If you take a look in the bottom right hand corner, now we can see those channels here. One through seven actually belong to the impact. Now, if we come to the top here in our instrument rack and I just single click on the impact, 
actually we need to come to the arrow here and at the bottom we have show channel setup so now we can see the active channels for the impact and if we'd like to make some more active we can just put a checkbox in here and now we can see that those are being populated within our console let's go ahead and hide those now going back to clicking once on the header here this is where we can actually view our sends here so this works a little bit funky uh, let's come down to our sample one so we can see our micro edit controls for our sample one here so we can make adjustments to the voice limit and so on so various parameters that are on our sample one if you'd like to have access to those in the console you can do that here we can even come to the disclosure arrow and set up micro edit parameters and so if I come over to the right hand side and let's open up the amp envelope actually we'll come to the amp let's double click on the panning click OK and now we can see that we have access to our panning within the console and this is going to apply to third party virtual instruments as well so here I've got a Falcon although with Falcon it requires a bit of extra setup to get those done but many other third party VST instruments are going to show some basic parameters and then you can use the same set up micro edit parameters to choose exactly what you're going to see within the console now we'll go ahead and click once to hide these and let's see what we're going to get on the sample one okay so that's good moving down to the bottom of our console we have two little buttons here and by default this is going to be on compact but if we click this button on the right we're going to have an extended view of our virtual instruments and then we can see the name of the particular preset that we're using now this is going to be the studio one preset so if i were to double click on this sample one two we can see this particular window here for this preset area so if you were to make some adjustments and load some samples and you save that as your own personal preset and you load that into a new song then that's going to be displayed when you choose this extended view now this little bar to the right here is going to show cpu usage for each of these individual instruments so if you're interested in seeing that bit of extra information for your devices you can go ahead and click on the extended view but we'll change that back to the compact for now now what if we have some effects that we've made some adjustments to and we'd like to apply that to another channel within our console well as you can imagine many things are drag and drop in studio one so for this pro eq i can just click hold and drag that over to our shaker bells and then that's going to be added to the channel like so let's go ahead and undo that also note that if you have multiple effects that you'd like to add to a separate channel we can just come to the inserts header here we can see that our arrow changes to a hand when we hover over the word inserts i can then click hold and drag and now our eq and compressor have been added to our shaker bells now something that's very subtle that you may not have noticed or something that you noticed and were a bit confused by is that if I come to our, I'm going to come to the audio track here and here we have our record arm button and just take note of our meter here. This is actually going to change and I'm going to turn off the monitoring and we see our meter becomes green and the view for our meter changes as well so we can see we have zero db up top here and if we're doing some recording we can monitor this to be sure that we're not clipping coming into studio one now this view is going to change if we have record arm and or the monitoring so if i turn that off but turn monitoring on then we can see that that updates to change so if you're working with a song and your meter looks different than the rest just take note whether you have record arm or monitoring on and this is going to specifically apply to our audio tracks now we also have a variety of options for what the meter will display by right clicking on it so here I'll come and right click and then we can see we can choose peak or peak RMS choose an RMS length peak hold hold length and then at the very bottom we can choose between pre fader metering post fader metering or post panner metering so you have a few options depending on how you would like to work now here we have several little dashes or leds 
Some of these are lit up, some are not. And if you've ever wondered what these are, we can just hover over that and we can see we have inserts, sends, and mix effects. So the top lead is gonna be for our inserts, the second lead will be for our sends, and the bottom will be for our mix effects. And basically, if they're lit up, then that means that you have an, an insert. So here we can see we in our insert section, we have Pro EQ and the compressor. In our sends, we have a room reverb going to our effects channel here. And then each of these has this orangish color because we are making use of a mix effects up above here. If I were to change this to none, then we can see that these go away. But I'll go ahead and turn that back on. And you can see that the top two LEDs are not active for all of these channels here because our inserts and sends are empty. We haven't added anything here yet. If I go ahead and click on the plus, let's choose on auto filter, close that out. Now we can see that this is then lit up for our insert section. Now moving on to our panner section here, we have several different options to choose from. So we have this downward facing arrow here. And if I click on that, we can choose between balance, dual, or binaural. We can also access these options by right clicking on the pan section. And we can see that we have these here. And also note that if I were to double click on the pan section here, we access this larger view where we can make our adjustments a bit more easily. And then we also have this drop down menu where we can choose between the balance dual and binaural as well. Clicking outside, we'll close that view. Now at the bottom of our channel, we have a button here which will allow us to open up the channel editor and we can see an overview of our various channels. So once that's active and visible, I can use my left and right arrows on the QWERTY keyboard to quickly switch between our channels to see what's going on with them. And if you happen to be seeing an effect show up, you can just click on the first button here to switch that over. And we'll go ahead and close that out. Now this particular song was created in a previous version of seven. And so our impact here, which we've already seen, if I click on this, we can see that there, all of our channels are basically shown here one through seven. But in version seven of Studio One, we now have instrument buses that are available. So if you happen to open up a song that was created in a previous version, you can simply right click on one of the channels for any multi out instrument. I'll right click on our impact channel one, and we can see that we have the option for create instrument bus. So I'll go ahead and click on that. Now you can see that our impact is now represented with one channel and at the bottom center area of this we have a folder so now when i click on the folder we expand to see the individual channels for the impact and if we don't need to do any mixing with those we can kind of clean them up by collapsing that folder icon like so but let's go ahead and reopen that and i'm going to pull this up a little bit we are actually missing some things that I wanted to talk about here. So let's double check to be sure that they're not being hidden. So here we have input output connections. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And that should be on by default normally. But now we can see we can the impact, audio is coming in from our impact and being sent to impact, which is our new instrument bus that we created. For our audio, we can see input is coming in from input L on our audio interface and heading to the main. And I just wanna mention here on our effects and bus channels, at the very top here, we have some dashes here. Now this one has the first few that are lit up and this just shows how many channels are being routed to this effects section. So if I actually click on these dashes, then we can see the names of the channels that are being routed here. So our Vox Sample 1, Flute 1, 2, and 3, or Perk 3. And this makes sense because we can see on all of those channels, the send has been set up to go to our reverb. Now our drums bus, we don't have any dashes. There's nothing showing here. And if I click on this, nothing happens because nothing's being sent there. But if I were to click once to select this snare, let's do the snare 1. And we'll go through to the kick 
Let's click here, and we'll choose the drums bus. And now we can see that these are lit, and when I click on this area, we can see the specific channels that are being routed here. And if those are not selected, I just deselected, we'll again click here. We have the option at the bottom to select all, and then all of those channels will be selected for us. Let's actually collapse the instrument bus for the impact. Now, if you're using room correction software or equalization like Sonarworks, we can actually make use of a listen bus. So if I were to right click, we can see that we have enable listen bus here at down at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and click once on that. And now we can see that that's been added to the far right hand side here. We have listen bus at the very bottom. This is our initial main. So again, if you're using something like Sonarworks, you can go ahead and click on the plus and then find that and add it to the listen bus. And then in this way, you can monitor and mix your song through that processing software. But when you export your song, you're only gonna be applying the effects and processing that are on your main. Now, the final thing we'll take a look at is the metronome routing and level. So I'm gonna actually reattach this so we can see our transport here. Now, it's important to be aware that we have discrete metronome controls when we have multiple outputs. So here I created that listen bus main. If you're doing surround work or you have just multiple outputs, then they're each gonna have this metronome button. So this, let's come to an empty area of the song and play this back. Let's turn the metronome on. Okay, so first of all, we can adjust the level. This is on our listen bus. Okay, so we can adjust the level there and that's, that's pretty hot, so I'll take that down. Also, we can turn the metronome off specifically for the listen bus, but leave it on our main or vice versa. So this is our global transpose button, which is gonna turn the metronome off for any output channels. But if you've engaged the metronome, you can specifically choose which output channels are going to play back the metronome by clicking on the buttons here. And then in the center, we have this volume control for each of the output channels. Okay, so I hope that you at least found a handful of things that you were not aware of and that this has been useful. I do offer one-on-one -on -one training, by the way, over Zoom in Studio One, so if you're interested in speeding up your learning curve, definitely check out the description area of this video or the pinned comment below for more information on that. And otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.